Um, future flying, I, God. I, I think uh, last week or the week before, I, I, I told you about this um, about this report out of I think engineers at Cambridge University uh, in the UK. They basically said, look, if we're going to achieve uh, we're going to achieve net zero uh, by 2050, what really we're saying is we need to ban all airplanes. We we can't fly. I mean, if you're going to fly, there's no way to achieve net zero. The 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 technology is not there. We're not going to have electric planes. There's no real alternative fuels. Um, at net zero is um, is just it's it, you know it it's a uh, uh, it 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 will force our hand. And uh, what we're going to experience and there's really no option here is no more flying. Uh, and um, you know that 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 sounds right to me. If if they're serious about the goal, then that's what it's probably going to require. Now, but it's hard to sell that. It's really hard to sell that to people that you can just ban flying. We're just going to ground all the airplanes uh, and, and uh, no, more, no more flying between countries, between uh, cities. Uh, take, take the train, right? Take the train. Uh, and uh, that, that is hard, a hard sell. But there is an alternative that can achieve a very similar goal. And that's what's really uh, happening. What is happening is that the, the, the right now, uh, airlines have to offset uh, something like half of the carbon they pollute by buying carbon offsets, right? And as those carbon offsets are getting more expensive, and they are, uh, what is happening is that uh, the price of flying becomes more expensive. This is a particularly, this is in Europe. We're talking about Europe. As uh, they are forced to buy more carbon offsets, the price of air flight increases. And uh, as that happens, what happens to demand? It, it goes down. One of the most, one of the most amazing things, uh, one of the most amazing things about the modern world, one of the most amazing things about the last 40 to 50 years is how cheap flying has become how accessible it has become to almost everybody in our society. A, a European vacation, which used to be only uh, for the wealthy, uh, not that long ago, maybe the upper middle class, uh, as of, let's say, the 1970s, is available almost to everybody today. Flying to Disneyland, flying across the country, flying to Asia. You can see that. With the, with the sheer number of tourists from relatively poor countries who are everywhere, everywhere, as you travel. There are millions and millions and millions of people traveling by air. I think there's something like 4 billion people who fly. Now, many of that is the same person flying many times like me. But 4 billion is a lot. If, if prices don't go off, if prices stay the same, they expect air traffic to go to 8 billion in a decade or so. 8 billion. Total number of population of Earth is around 8 billion. It means that people are flying, people are enjoying seeing the world. It is one of the great, beautiful things about, uh, you know, the modern world in which we live. How cheap things have gotten, right? We... we we, we're very quick to, to, to talk about inflation. We're very quick uh, to talk about, I don't know, uh, stagnation. But one of the things that is hard to really measure and hard to really capture is how cheap things have become. And as a consequence of the cheapness, how they have impacted disproportionately their lives, primarily of people who can't aff couldn't afford them before. Flying is one of those things. Well, it turns out now that uh, this European Union emissions trading system Airlines are going to have to buy emission allowances to cover every metric ton of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere on flights, starting and ending in the European economic zone, which include, including the UK and Switzerland. They only buy half now, but by 2026, they're going to have to buy double. Prices are already expensive. They're going to go up. The price of carbon emissions offsets has gone up. 
right? The, in, in, in Europe, there is a market in CO2. You can buy and sell CO2. It's gone up from a, around 25 euro per metric ton, I guess, of carbon uh, in 2019 to about 100 today. It's out out four times. So when you pay, pay those really, really high FAs, realize that a big chunk of that is going to carbon offsets. A big chunk of that is a consequence over the hysteria around climate change and the course of government policies to reduce that, uh, that um, uh, you know, the carbon, uh, carbon footprint. Um, you know, basically, uh, carbon outline f uh, for, the, you know, the, 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 in, over the next 25 years, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, companies are going to have to reduce their carbon footprint uh, significantly, it's not only by buying credits, but also by just reducing the use of carbon by law. So uh, they're going to have to invest heavily in improved technology. They're going to have to invest heavily in alternative fuels. They're going to have to invest heavily in, uh, you know, in the offsets and everything, right? The total cost of this is something like $820 billion. If you were going to reach, if the industry is going to reach net zero by 2050. Now, there is no $820 billion to do this. That money is, doesn't exist. But, you know, this is going to basically squeeze and eliminate, you know, they're talking about um, uh, just the increase in, in carbon uh, offsets that the companies have to buy is going to shrink the profits of the major European airlines, particularly the, the cheap ones, the Ryanair, the EasyJet, the Wiz, Vueling, Eurowings, Transvi Transvia. These are the real cheap airlines that make it possible for everybody to travel all over Europe at really, really amazingly low prices. Going to decrease their profits by 77%. 77%. What's the outcome of this? Much higher prices squeezing out the low-cost carriers, a lot fewer flyers, a lot fewer passengers, uh, an economy in which, again, only the wealthy can travel by air, and uh, just fewer flights. I read a story, I think, I read a story that, and I, 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 I did a show on this, or I mentioned it in a show maybe a year or two ago. France now has eliminated short flights if, 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 you can, uh, if you can take a train between two cities, and I can't remember the exact number of hours, um, if it's be below a certain number of hours it'll take you to get from point A to point B, they have banned the use of airplanes from those two points. Europe is serious about this. They're serious about eliminating flying. Whether it's through the pricing mechanism, making it so expensive, uh, Miroslav says it's 150 minutes. If the train is 150 minutes or less, can't fly. Airplanes are grounded, or at least Miroslav thinks it's under 50 minutes. Anyway, um, so no short hop flying. I mean, Europe is serious about eliminating, basically eliminating uh, flying uh, and eliminating the ability to, 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 for people to take planes, to go on vacations, to do business. The consequence of this are horrific to our quality of life, to our standard of living, and, and to our ability to do business. And it's, you know, they're talking about, so they're concerned about this flight, what they call flight inequality. That is that a few people, the, the richest 10%, fly much more than the poor. The poor do one flight a year, and people like me do dozens of flights a year. So they want to they wanna introduce a frequent flyer tax. You know how you get frequent flyer points? They want to introduce a frequent flyer tax to tax people who fly a lot, again, to reduce ability to fly. What this represents is a direct, unequivocal attack on the quality of life, standard of living 
of people in the world today, particularly Europeans in this case, I don't think this would fly in the United States. And what are they pushing? They're pushing trains for now, electric trains. Where are they going to get all the electricity to run these trains from solar panels and uh, from windmills in England and in Germany and in the Netherlands, you know, where the sun shines all year long, right? So be prepared to be stuck. Or, or, or the, alter the, the other way around to look at this is I've urged you all to travel. I've urged you all to go see the world. And I urge you again, and I did a whole show on why traveling should be a value to you, that there's, there's great joy and great benefit and, and great excitement and great, great thrill to travel and see the world. Do it soon. Do it soon. Do it before it becomes too expensive. Do it before, maybe, in the world we're heading towards, it becomes impossible. Do it now. Get on a plane. Fly somewhere. Enjoy the freedom that you have now because those freedoms are going to be taken away one way or another. The European Union, at least, is dedicated to taking them away from you. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.